no. Uh, it's okay. Some pocket for for this. Sure. We have some pocket for this. Um, no, I can show this one. I can't read it. It's okay. Okay. What is it? Okay. Okay. The, our next and the last speaker of this session is Aise Bora from Bursa Technical University, uh, who will have a talk on continuity. Continuity distance. Mm -hmm. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you very much for giving me opportunity to have a talk in here. Uh, today I will talk about continuity distance, and this is a joint work with my colleagues Mehmet Cik Pamuk from uh, Middle East Technical University and Tanya Vargili from Cardenas Technical University. Uh, and here are uh, here is the plan of my talk. First of all, uh, I will uh, introduce the homotopic distance and um, speak about why it is important. And then I will introduce some combinatorial stuff. Then uh, I will focus on conjugate distance. And later on, I will uh, discuss, the, discuss the relation between conjugate distance and spatial Lustanik Schneemann category and discrete topological complexity. And uh, then I will talk about the uh, relation between conjugate distance and the geometric realization. And moreover, I will um, say something about horizontal subdivision. So first of all, what is a homotopic distance? Um, this uh, definition is due to Enric Basias Virgos and David Mosquera Lewis. Um, so we start with two continuous maps, um, sorry, uh, continuous maps. Uh, and we say that uh, homotopic distance between these maps uh, is the least integer k if we can find an open covering of x um, with k plus one subsets such that the restriction of f and g on ui uh, is homotopic for each r. Um, and before I start to introduce the importance of homotopic uh, distance, I want to recall some basic definitions. Uh, one of them is due to Michael Farber, and this is called topological complexity. So let's start with a, a path vibration, um, pi uh, from the path space of x to x cross x, which takes a path and maps it in uh, its initial at final point. Uh, then we say that the topological complexity of X is the least integer K such that we can find uh, K plus one open subsets which covers K um, X uh, times X such that uh, we can find a section of pi on each UI. Uh, and another definition is the definition of the standing Schneemann category uh, and it is as follows. We say that uh, Lustanik Schneemann category, or simply category, is the least integer k if there exists an open covering of x with these k plus one open subsets such that each inclusion iota is non homotopic. <coughs> and homotopic distance actually is a concept which general, uh, generalizes uh, generalize these two concepts. I mean, uh, if we take the projection maps as uh, given in here, then we say that the homotopic distance between these projection maps is just the homotopic um, the um, topological complexity of the space. And um, we can also say that if we consider the identity map and the constant map, then the homotopic distance between these two maps is just the category of the space. Well, this is quite obvious, uh, but which is not um, that much obvious is that if we consider uh, these inclusions, which are given with these formulas, then the homotopic distance between these inclusions is just the uh, lustanik schneemann category of the space. So now we know that homotopic distance generalizes, uh, generalizes these two concepts uh, topological complexity and the standing schneemann category and one other thing is 
Uh, we know that homotopic distance deal with maps, but uh, on the other hand, um, topological complexity and Ustanik Schinnerman category uh, deal with uh, not maps, but spaces. Uh, and um, this gives us uh, the opportunity to play with composition of maps. Um, well, I'm talking about the uh, homotopic distance now. Uh, and it is likely to prove some open problems in uh, topological complexity uh, by using composition proposition and properties of homotopic distance. Uh, and well, uh, what is at the background is the following three the theorems, which tell how homotopic distance behaves under composition. Well, I want to introduce these uh, theorems, uh, and they are all due to Macias Virgos and Mosquera Lewis. Uh, one of them is the following if we are given two maps, F and G, and another map which is composable with uh, F and G. Uh, from the right hand side, then we say that uh, the homotopic distance uh, of these compositions is less than the original homotopic distance of F and G. And uh, as an example, I want to illustrate a, a, an alternative proof of a category is less than or equal to topological complexity. So let's start with the standing Schlemmer category. Uh, and uh, from a few slides back, we know that it is just the homotopic distance between the identity map and the constant map. And if we um, play with the functions in a very careful way, then we can see that uh, the identity map can be written with, the, uh, with um, sorry, as a composition of projection and uh, inclusion maps. And also, we can say that the constant map can also be uh, written as a composition of these two guys here. And now we apply the theorem one, and we obtain that uh, this thing is less than equal to the homotopic distance between projections, and this is exactly the topological complexity of the space. So um, it's just one my proof. And let me introduce the other two theorems. Um, one of them is as follows. We have two maps, F and G, and uh, this time we have another map which is composable with uh, F and G from the left-hand side. Then we say that the homotopic distance between these compositions is less than the homotopic distance of F and G. And the third theorem, uh, which looks a bit more complicated, uh, tells us that we have H and H dash uh, from Z to X, and we have two other maps from uh, X to Y. Let's name them F and G. Uh, and uh, we want this uh, relation to be hold. So we say that this inequality holds. <clears throat> um, and there's one other theorem about homotopic distance, uh, which is uh, which is in the sense, um, well, actually, uh, this is a theorem which says that uh, homotopic distance is homotopy invariant in some sense. Um, well, we say that um, X and X dash um, are of the same homotopy type. And similarly, we say the same thing for Y and Y dash. And moreover, we, uh, we um, say that there is a, a homotopic equivalence uh, beta and another homotopic equivalence alpha. And we say that um, this diagram, uh, the following diagram uh, is homotopic in the sense of uh, being homotopic and this other diagram is also homotopic in the sense of being homotopic. Uh, then we say that uh, the homotopic distance between F and G is the same thing as homotopic distance between F dash and G dash. 
Now let me talk about some uh, combinatorial stuff. Um, first of all, I want to start with being contiguous. So let's start with two simpli simplicial maps. Uh, we say that uh, these simplicial maps, phi and psi, are continuous if um, a simplex in the domain, let's say sigma, uh, we have then, uh, if you consider the union of phi sigma and psi sigma, then this will constitute a simplex in L. And um, if we take another um, two simplicial maps again, we say that they are C contiguous. Um, if we can find a sequence of maps, HIs, um, such that such that H0 is phi and HC is psi and each pair, uh, each, uh, each such pairs um, is contiguous. Uh, and moreover, we say that phi and psi are said to be in the same contiguous class if we can find an integer c such that uh, phi and psi are c contiguous. Um, now I want to talk about elementary collapse and elementary strong collapses. Um, first of all, um, let's start with a simplicial complex K. Uh, then we say that, uh, let's say, let's pick two simplices. One is, let me illustrate it on, the, on this example. This is our K, the simplicial K, uh, complex. And so let's take this simplex and name it as tau. And we consider a face of that simplex and name it uh, sigma. But uh, sigma is not an arbitrary um, face of tau. Actually, sigma uh, must have no other cofaces. Uh, then uh, we delete um, sigma and tau, uh, and we get a simplicial complex, and we call uh, this procedure uh, elementary collapse of K. And this is the elementary collapse of K. And if we inverse, uh, if we consider the inverse of the elementary collapse, then this is called the elementary expansion. Uh, and let me move to another definition. Um, strong elementary, elementary strong collapse. But in order to understand it, I need to define uh, the definition. I have to give the definition of uh, what it is to be dominated by a vertex. So uh, again, I want to illustrate it on that example. Let's say that this is the simplicial complex K. Then we say that um, a vertex V is dominated by another vertex V dash if every maximized simplex that contains V also contains V dash. Uh, for instance, uh, in here, um, we have two simplices which contains V, the first one and the second one, and we can see that they also contain uh, V dash. But on the other hand, we can uh, say that V um, is not dominated by V, because if we consider this simplex here, uh, then which contains V dash, uh, but we can easily see that it does not contain V. <clears throat> now let's focus on elementary strong collapse. Uh, an elementary strong collapse consists of removing uh, the open star of, uh, of a dominated vertex V, from the simplicial complex K. So um, I consider the same uh, simplicial complex as before. And we know that V is dominated by V dash. And we consider the open star of V, these dark parts, uh, and we move it, we remove it from K, and we obtain this simplicial uh, complex on the right hand side. And we call this an elementary strong uh, collapse. 
and the inverse is called elementary strong expansion. And um, the finite sequence of elementary strong collapses or expansions is called a strong collapse or strong expansion. Um, and we say that um, two simplicial complexes have the same strong homotopy type, which is usually denoted by this, uh, if they are related by a sequence of strong collapses or expansions. And also, um, being, um, being in the same homotopy type is related to contiguity. So we can give such a definition. Um, so uh, we start with a simplicial map phi from k to k dash. And we say that it's a strong, um, it is a strong equivalence if we can find another simplicial map psi from k dash to k such that these two uh, are hot. So we say that uh, k and k dash are in the same strong homotopy type, uh, sorry, have the same strong homotopy type, uh, if and only if uh, we can find uh, a strong equivalence between them. And one another definition is, uh, we say that a simplicial complex is strongly collapsible if k and uh, the singleton complex uh, are of the same strong homotopy type. Now let's focus our main uh, concept, the conjugate distance. Uh, this uh, concept is due to Macias Virgos and Mosquera Luis. Uh, in their paper about, about uh, homotopic distance, they introduce uh, conjugate distance, they give the definition, and uh, they leave it as a feature study. Um, now uh, we start with uh, actually conjugate distance. Um, is kind of a distance between simplicial maps. Uh, so we start with two simplicial maps, pi and psi from k to l, and we say that the conjugate distance between these simplicial maps is a least integer k if we can find subcomplexes j0, j1, uh, up to jk covering k such that if we consider the restrictions of um, pi and psi on Ji's, uh, then uh, they are in the same contiguity class. And um, my colleagues, Pamuk uh, and Bergili and myself, introduced some propositions. Uh, first of all, it's very obvious. It doesn't really matter if we consider the contiguity distance between pi and psi or psi and pi. And secondly, uh, we introduce, introduce the following. Uh, the distance between two simplicial maps, um, let's say pi and psi, um, is equal to zero, if and only if these two maps are in the same conjugate class. Uh, and the last one is uh, conjugate distance is well-defined on the set of equivalence classes of simplicial maps. Now we have uh, the following theorem, which is actually uh, the simplicial analog of uh, the theorem that I introduced before. Um, this time we have um, K and K dash to have the same strong homotopy type. Uh, in other words, we can find a beta, a strong equivalence between them. Uh, and moreover, we have L and L dash have the same strong homotopy type, so we can find uh, a strong equivalence type between them. Uh, and we say that um, this diagram is commutative in the sense of uh, being in the same quantity class. And also, this other diagram is also commutative. Uh, in the sense of being in the same contributor class. In other words, these are fault. Uh, then we say that uh, the contributor distance between um, pi and psi is the same thing as the contributor distance between uh, pi dash and psi dash. <clears throat> uh, well, the idea of the proof is the following. 
um, since that we have um, strong equivalences. Now we can use that proposition, which tells that uh, if we have two simplicial maps and if uh, we have um, at least a right strong equivalence beta, then this is false. And also we have another proposition uh, which can be understood as the left strong equivalence analog of the previous proposition. In other words, if we have two simplicial maps and a left strong equivalence alpha, then these two are equivalent, uh, are equal. Uh, and uh, the first proposition is due to that proposition. And the second one is due to that proposition. Uh, and then we conclude that we have, uh, we, we can prove the theorem that we introduced. And moreover, I want to, um, I want you to notice that uh, the result of the above theorem is still valid. If one takes beta to be not a strong equivalence, but just right strong equivalence, and also alpha to be not a strong equivalence, but just left strong equivalence, uh, then the theorem is still valid. Um, and let me introduce uh, the, the relation between conjugated distance and simplicial Spanish number category and discrete um, topological complexity. Well, we, um, we expect to have such a relation because we know that there is a relation between homotopic distance and the Steinig Schneemann category and the topological complexity. So uh, before I introduce the relations, let me introduce the definitions of simplicial category and discrete topological complexity. Um, first of all, let me introduce the simplicial category. Uh, but in order to understand this definition, we need to understand what is a categorical simplex, uh, subcomplex, sorry. Uh, well, these definitions are all due to Mar uh, Fernandez Tanero, Macias Virgos, and Vilches. Uh, so let me introduce um, categorical subcomplex first. So we start with a simplicial complex K, and we consider a subcomplex of K, and we say that this subcomplex is categorical if we can find the vertex of K such that this inclusion uh, and the constant map at the vertex V0 are in the same conjugate class. Uh, and moreover, uh, we say that simplicial LS category uh, of, simplex, uh, of a complex K is the least integer M such that K is covered by M plus one categorical subcomplexes. Uh, and one easy to see fact is K is strongly collapsible if and only if uh, simply should category is equal to zero. Um, and let me first uh, give a characterization of simplicial category in terms of conjugate distance. Um, as expected, uh, we have that the conjugate distance between the identity simplicial map and the constant map at the vertex V0 is just the simplicial category of K. And secondly, if we consider these inclusions, which are also a simplicial maps, uh, then we have that um, the conjugate distance between these inclusions is just the simplicial Lustanic Schneemann category. Uh, and one other theorem tells that uh, suppose we have uh, phi and psi as simplicial maps uh, from k to k dash, then if k or k dash is strongly collapsible, then we say that uh, the conjugate distance between these two maps are zero. And for the converse of the theorem, we can say that um, the conjugate distance between pi 
and psi is equal to 0 for any pairs of maps from k to k, then k must be strongly collapsible. <clears throat> Now let me introduce the discrete topological complexity, but in order to uh, define it, I need to introduce the fiber subcomplexes. Um, so let me start with a simply issue complex K and uh, a subcomplex omega of, um, of the um, categorical product of K is called fiber subcomplex if we can find uh, sigma um, from omega to k, a simplicial map such that uh, these two maps are in the same continuity, um, sorry, uh, are, are in the same continuity plus. Uh, by the way, delta is the diagonal map as given in here. Um, now let's focus on the definition of discrete topological complexity. We say that Discrete topological complexity of a uh, complex K is the least integer N such that K square is covered by M plus one fiber subcomplexes. Um, and we have uh, such a theorem. Well, the following theorem is first mentioned um, in Marcel Virgos and Mosquera Lewis paper, which is about the homotopic distance of maps. Um, but uh, they didn't give a proof. Uh, so in our paper, our archive paper by my colleagues Pong and Vergili and I, uh, we um, give an explicit proof. Um, so it is as follows. Uh, if we consider the projection maps, uh, so the first and the second factors, then the quantitative distance between um, these projection maps is uh, exactly the same thing as uh, the discrete topological complexity of a complex. And next, um, I want to focus on the relation uh, between contributed distance of any simplicial maps and um, simplicial standard Schneemann category and discrete topological complexity of their um, domain and co-domain. So if we are given two simplicial maps, phi and psi from k to k dash, then uh, we can see that the quantitative distance between these two guys is less than or equal to the simplicial category of k of the domain. <clears throat> and if we are given uh, any simplicial maps, phi and psi from k to k dash, then the quantitative distance between these two maps is less than or equal to uh, the discrete topological complexity of the codomain k dash. And let me um, talk about some geometric realization related uh, things. Um, well, um, we introduced the following theorem. If we have two maps, Phi and psi, then uh, there is a relation between um, the homotopic distance of their geometric realizations and the contributed distance of these simulation maps as follows. And uh, we want, uh, we also introduced an example for the strict case of that inequality. So uh, we considered. Uh, a simplicial complex K as uh, given in Barmak and Minia's paper. And um, by Fernandez, Ternoro, Macias, Rigos, and Wilches, it is already proved that the simplicial category of that complex is equal to one, which makes its contributed distance uh, between the identity map and the constant map uh, is equal to one as well. On the other hand, K is, if we consider the uh, geometric realization of K, then it is just a contractible space. So this makes this homotopic distance to be, uh, to be equal to zero. So we get the following. This 
is just equal to zero, which is strictly less than the conjugate distance, which is one. And now let me talk about percentage subdivision. Uh, first of all, let me introduce what is an induced map um, of a simplicial map on the Bercentric subdivisions. So if we have a simplicial map, phi from k to k dash, then the induced map on the Bercentric subdivisions, which is um, defined as follows, is a simplicial map. Uh, and a theorem um, by my colleagues and me, uh, tells that uh, conjugate distance between um, the induced maps on Bercentric subdivisions must be equal than um, less than less than or equal to the conjugate distance of the original simplicial maps. So, as a corollary, we can see that um, simplicial category of uh, Bercentric subdivision of K is less than or equal to the simplicial category of K. Well, this is actually, this is already proved uh, by Fernanda Ternero, Fernandez Ternero, Macias Virgos and Frisches uh, in their paper as a consequence of some, um, some finite space related theorems. Uh, and also in another paper by Fernandez Ternero, Macias Virgos, Minos and Frisches uh, that they give a direct proof for that corollary. And here we gave much easier proof and we use, we only use the conjugate distance. So we consider phi to be the identity, simplicial um, identity map, uh, the simplicial map on K. Uh, and we take psi as the constant simplicial map. Uh, and we put them in that theorem. So let me start with this guy, the simplicial cat of uh, the Bercentric subdivision of K. And since that we know that this is just the identity map and this is a constant map, uh, we can write and also from the definition of uh, simplicial category uh, and its relation with conjugate distance, we can write this equality. And from the above theorem, we can write this inequality. And we know that this is just the simplicial category of, uh, of the complex K. Um, and that's it. That is, uh, these are the references. Uh, this is our archive paper and other references that we use for this work. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. If you have any mean, like, really questions, comments. In the in the open problems yeah, in the, well, uh, we tried something on um, um, what was that something um, the simplicial analog for uh, cohomology things because of these whites, but we couldn't end up in some clear results. So I don't know, maybe in future. <laughs> Any more questions? Comments? If not, then thank to the speaker again. Okay, um, so just an announcement. We should have the lunch very soon. And the bus, for those of you who want to go to the end of the it's in 1.30. So my suggestion is, um, those of you who are going for the excursion, Please, you know, kind of put together and stay on some of the 
walk over there and you will ask that you are served first so, so that you can eat before you go, all right? Um, yeah, that's it. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> Right, so it's probably not, not an actual problem, but um, 